Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. We're here. Ah, well, Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but if I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right, now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. So it seems like we don't actually get to choose. We have to do this. We have to side with Mortimer and rig it. Hmm. Do you believe in demons? What are you uh, talking about, Louis? Where is he going with this? I can feel something. Demons, Your Eminence. I am a cardinal. Of course I believe in evil. What on earth is the matter with him? Is he losing his mind? All right, hang in there, Louis. Don't lose him. Rest assured, Your Eminence, uh, I'm fine. I... But... It's impossible... Rest assured, Your Eminence, I am fine. I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. It's kind of like transferring my spirit. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Why would Piaggi have three stamps just to mislead us? Oh my goodness. My dear Giuseppe, as my health does not allow me to honor Sir Holmes' invitation, yeah, we've read this before. P.S. Do not use your personal stamp when writing to me. Instead, use the one with my motto on it. The December 31st, 1792. G.J.G.H.F.J. What? Okay. My dear Giuseppe, I know you're on your way to Mortimer's residence. I hope you have a good trip. Know that this mission is crucial, my friend. The January 17, 1793, E H H B C F. I got no clue at all. There's only two letters here. Hmm. Choose a stamp. In one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. it must be in Latin. The Pope's model is in Latin. Okay. Uh... Justizia, misericordia, e umulta. <sighs> Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. That's not Latin, is it? I don't think so. Let's look at the other ones first. Piaggi once gave me a sealed letter. It had the same seal on it. I remember now. Yeah, but that's him giving it to Sarah, right? He wasn't gonna give it to the Pope. Middle stamp. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Is that Italian? No, this one could be Latin. I don't know, man. This seal is different to the one Piaggi used for the letter he gave me. Yes, I'm certain of it. Left stamp. A circle with a cross inside. Would that be a Pope's motto? 
now, I distinctly remember this seal that Piaggi used on the letter he gave me. This isn't the same stamp. Okay. The middle stamp. Let's translate this one. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Latin. It blooms in the house of God. Okay. Sure, I will... The other one is not Latin, right? I don't think so. It doesn't sound Latin. We'll use the stamp. We chose the stamp before anything else. Secret code. Contents of the letter. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. Oh. If we don't want to play nice with either of them. Hmm. Maybe that's... I gotta say, this one's appealing because at this point, I'm not really particular to either Holm or Mortimer. Why not? It even appears that Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory both have access to obscure, superior forces to help them reach their ends. I think the Papal States, for the sake of their own preservation, ought to condemn this practice of conferences in the future. Wow. Everyone's gonna be really angry at me. This might turn out really poorly for me, actually. Now for the secret code. How do we figure this out, the secret code? GJ, GHFJ. GJ, GHFJ. GHFJ. EH. HBCF? Some kind of acronym? The year? The date? There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do without it, but... I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today the date is 2401-1793. Oh my god. <laughs> Do it without the code. Um, let's think about it. I need to see his hand. It's like half covered. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date. Two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo. It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. So we only have to care about the month and the year? Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today, the date is 2401-1793. Can I take away the HUD? No, I just gotta like live with seeing all this stuff on the screen. Um... This is kind of difficult. What? Oh, they won't give me any hints at all. None whatsoever. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo. It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Okay, you know what? Let me just write everything down first, because I can't even see it with the freaking subtitles all over it. Okay, I've been sitting here for the past 10 minutes, and I think I finally got it. I've been writing it all out on paper. Uh, the hardest part of this puzzle was actually how you can't see Piaggi's hand properly. I had to compare several different screenshots just to get a, a view of what it's actually like. But basically, it's like a clock. So you see in the, in the middle there, there's five numbers. 24, 31, 3, 10, and 17. These correspond to the days of the month. So according to the cipher that Piaggi and the Pope have, they can only write letters to each other on those five days. 
Okay, so let's use the first letter as an example. January 17, 19... or 1793. You take the date, 17. Actually, can I use my mouse here? Oh, you can actually see the full circle like this if I selected one of these ones. Alright, anyway, so using this one as an example then. 17, it means find 17 on this circle here, which is right here. And there's a letter that's right outside connected to 17 here. And I know you can't see it very well here, but it says E. And I figure this out by looking at the cipher itself because all these letters appear on the circle here. So 17 corresponds to E. If you start from 17, the position of 0 corresponds to E. The position of 1 corresponds to H. 2 corresponds to A. 3 corresponds to F. 4 corresponds to I. 5 corresponds to G. 6 corresponds to J. So on and so forth. It's like counting clockwise on this little letter wheel thing here, if that makes any sense. 0, 1 would mean starting at 17, 0, 1. E H one seven nine three one H two three four five six seven B and then nine eight nine C and then three would be starting from seventeen again one two three F and that's how you get the cipher which means if we are talking about the date of January twenty fourth nineteen seventy three we should be looking at twenty four here and zero one. That would be AF. So let's do AF for the first letters here. Today the date is 2401-1793. A. F. Today the date is 2401-1793. And then if you look at 1793, starting from 24, again, 1. 1 would be F. 7. It would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, C, 8, 9, F, C, H, and then 1, 2, 3, F, C, H, G. I hope this makes sense, although I'm not really explaining it super well. But anyway, it should be A, F, F, C, H, G. Today the date is 2401-1793. C. Today the date is 2401-1793. Yeah, you don't have to tell me that that many times. H? Today the date is 2401-1793. And then... G. Today is the 2401-1793. That's it! That's it! Do it! There we go. Your eminence, all ready to send the... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Mm, nothing, nothing. I'm scared because, you know the letter we wrote? If Mortimer or Holm reads my mind, they'll know what I wrote in the letter. And in the letter, I was like, oh, both of them suck, so I don't know what's gonna happen there. But let's deal with Von Volner first. The old goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Well, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Okay, don't say that. <laughs> um, not this one. Tranquilizer. Maybe he'll think I'm smart if I say that, huh? Occultism! Um, I think Von Volner is weak towards occultism, right? Mm, we don't know. We could try. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just calm down, calm down. Louis came to God see damn because it. he claimed he was hearing voices. We've just finished an exorcism session. An exorcism? Are you having me on? I can't see any exorcism instruments. That's because I've just put them away. I don't know what you're up to, Piaggi. But I do know you're trying to pull one over on me. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is. And there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. 
What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Uh, Whoa! No, listen, my son. This is all getting out of hand. Hogwash! I don't trust him in the slightest. Why not? Can you keep a secret? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I think the right choice there was probably the tranquilizer. That's right, because Von Volner likes occultism, so if you try to trick him with that, it's not gonna work. He's an expert. It's not just about picking things that people like or are usually associated with. Of course, my son. Would you like to tell me under the confidentiality of confession? <laughs> Ugh, don't talk rubbish. I don't trust the little runt because he is Mortimer's son. Oh! Would you believe it? How does he know? Dear God, how is that possible? I am flabbergasted. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? No, no. Oh, the fact that we're in Piaggi right now means that Piaggi doesn't know about this. And he won't know about it when I get out. The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. <laughs> that's right. No, no, that's gonna make him know that you're in there, Louis. Von Volner? Diversion. Diversion. Conviction. Logic. Mm. Home will be against it, will he? Not in my room. Not in my room. Um, this one is probably the right one, I think. I am certain that Sir Gregory would be opposed. You know nothing! I know Sir Gregory better That's than- That's against the rules of the conference, Monsieur Von Volner. I refuse to go against Sir Gregory. Right. Monsieur Von Volner, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. Politics. I'll tell Mortimer. I'll tell home. Your king. The Prussian king. Maybe a little bit excessive, but let's read his mind again. He is capable of reporting me to Sir Gregory. Uh, I'm really risking my neck here. If you tell Mortimer, that's basically saying you've switched sides. So yes, tell home. Threaten to tell home. If you lay a finger on him, I'll denounce you to Sir Gregory. I'm warning you. You old weasel! Very well, Piaggi, you win. I refuse to let you do the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to. But I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Oh, I blinked. <laughs> right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the Red Salon. Well, where was Piaggi's spirit the whole time, then? Close call. What is that? You gained one skill point in diversion. You succeeded in preventing Von Volner from poisoning you. Oh. Whew. Whew. Hey everybody, I'm here for breakfast. Oh. With just you. So, Louis, what was your first time like? Bewildering, isn't it? Here's your letter. I have to admit, the experience was utterly amazing. Come, tell me more. <laughs> Can't wait to do it next time. <laughs> wow, Louis, Louis is just... I don't know, he's learning to deal with his demon powers. <laughs> well, honestly, I... My stomach was just turning in circles. <laughs> that reminds me of my first time. Ooh, but you did it. 
Gregory. Uh-oh. What can I do for you? I've just come to make sure dear Louis has all the information he needs. Needs for what? You are free to make your own choices, William. I would like the same for him, too. There's nothing I want more, Gregory. Your schemes will lead to your demise, brother. Don't involve Louis. He has nothing to do with all this. The end of the conference approaches, and this masquerade will soon be torn asunder. Don't drag him down with you in your disgrace. Oh, ye of little faith. On the contrary, brother, Louis has just entered the family. Give him a chance to find his place. His place? I don't want to be torn between you two. I just don't want to be a part of anything you guys are doing. What place is that? At the end of a leash, like all the others. Don't listen to him. He's angry with our father. And with good reason. He governs us in the same way he governs humanity. Through fear and submission. Same old tune. When will you understand that it's necessary to impose order for things to move forward properly? You are under his thumb and proud of it. Open your eyes for crying out loud. His whole system has become outdated and he's too old to see it. He will lead us to our demise. Here he goes with another of his grand speeches. William has always been fond of staging big scenes. It's his theatrical side. You're the one with the makeup. <laughs> Don't say anything. How dare you? You are blind, brother. Even if the evidence bit you on the nose, you still wouldn't see it. I feel sorry for you. Tea is drunk hot or not at all, William. When will you learn? It's too bitter. You shouldn't let it brew so long. I knew you'd be coming along. You are so predictable. Methodical, I would say. Things must be accomplished in the right order if we want the world to keep turning as it does. But what's he afraid that Mortimer will do to me? It resembles an autocratic regime. I don't really like any of these ones. Actually, I like this one the most, but I'll, I'll do this one. You came here to warn me, sir. No, to advise you. Advise me against my father? Why? I think you are capable of deciding for- You haven't answered my question. Why warn me against my father? What are you afraid he will do to me? Well, I wouldn't want him to lead you into- I don't know what absurd adventure in you which- You act as though I were in danger. I agree with Louis, Gregory. You're trying to pass me off as a villain about to devour him. That's not funny, William. I won't let him follow you. You see, Louis, Gregory came here to make you change your mind. It's time for things to change. I acknowledge Father has done many good things for humanity, but his time is over, and now he must pass on the torch. That's enough. There, Louis. That's the pathetic example your father has to offer. I really am sorry about what happened to you. You don't know our family yet. We can't have given you a very good impression, but bear in mind that we are all against William's project. On the contrary. If he insists on going through with it, we will have no other choice than to intervene by force. Consequently, my dear Louis, you're going to have to choose sides. I would much rather have met you in different circumstances. There you are, Louis. See what happens when you don't follow their orders to the letter. Louis, I'm afraid the time to decide is now. Now? <coughs> if you follow William, he will drag you down with him. If, on the other hand, you support me, I can assure you that nothing will happen to you. You won't be blamed for your father's errors. Ah, the masks are off. I offer you liberty. He obliges you to choose, and shamelessly asks you to betray your own father. That is their true face. Right. Before I answer, well, I better think it over very carefully. Do I intend to embrace my demon nature and take my place on the chessboard? Do I stay out of it and do my utmost to stop them? Or do I renounce my nature and do all I can to stay human? Oh, is this like a final big choice? I don't know. I think 
I would rather live simply. I don't really want to like manipulate people's minds, hear their thoughts. It might seem handy now, but if we have that power for a long time, maybe it's gonna turn out to be a curse because we don't necessarily always want to know what people are thinking. What people don't say out loud, it's not meant for other people to know. If I say I'm a man, I'm basically saying F off to both of them. Demon? Hmm. No, let's, let's stay a man. Mortimer is like, oh, how could you make him betray his own father? But you, he wanted to make me go against Sarah too, so I don't know about this whole thing. I was born a man. I, I grew up as such. Finding out that I'm a demon makes no difference. I refuse to let them manipulate humanity the way they do. They're gonna ask me to choose between them. I'll just have to go with the lesser evil of the two. But they better not count on me to keep my word. I'll bring them all down. So? <coughs> what do you choose, Louis? They can read our thoughts. <laughs> so I don't know how this is gonna... Yeah... I guess the council is kind of like alternate history of our reality. And in our reality, things like voting and abolishment of slavery, these things actually do exist. So does that mean that Mortimer wins out in the end? Would it not be wiser to join with a winning party? <laughs> but I, also, I don't feel like Holm has really given me reason to join with him yet, so I guess I'll, I'll go with Mortimer. Especially because he's my dad. Gotta, gotta go with the daddy. I shall follow my father, Sir Gregory. Very well. But don't say I didn't warn you. Please, don't take offense, but I just can't turn my back on him. That said, if he turns his back on me, I won't be slow in sticking a dagger between his shoulder blades. It's time we finished what we started, brother. The final vote of the conference over the acquisition of Louisiana will take place in a few hours. I propose you gather your troops and prepare to close the debate. That's precisely what I was going to suggest. Come, follow me. It's time for us to get ready. I think what we chose is consistent with the letter because we wrote that both Mortimer and Holm were not good in the letter to the Pope. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is? You. My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards. I completely forgot about this, but on our side, we only have Napoleon. Literally everybody else is on home side. Oh my god. Ooh, nothing alternate, nothing failed? I falsified a letter for the Pope. I chose to discredit Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory in my letter to the Pope. I learned to use my new power. I temporarily became allied to Lord Mortimer for the continuation of the conference. Temporarily. I succeeded in stopping Von Volner from poisoning me. I found Lady Hillsborough in her room. Hmm. We initially sided with Holm where everybody else was, and now... What about Emily? Emily is my sister. What's she gonna do? She's on Holmes' side too, so I don't know how much of a help I'm gonna be. Hmm. There you go. Points. I got eight points? Did I not do my points last time? How come I have so many? Get that. Get that. Perfect. Perfect. What am I close to getting a level up on? Psychology questioning? Sure. Alright. And that's it! Episode 4, Burning Bridges, The Council. Um... I don't even know what to say about this game sometimes, because it's so bizarre. <laughs> but I think it's a good kind of bizarre. Yeah, because I, I always get a ton of laughs out of this. Not quite sure if the council is really supposed to have comedic value, but I find a lot of that out of this game, so <laughs> it is what it is. Lots of new revelations this time, and it seems like episode 5 will culminate in the, the final vote of the conference. 
I don't know if Mortimer was just buttering me up when he was like, Oh, Louis, I have you on my side. We'll be fine. But Emily is also a demon, so there's two demons on both sides that we know of. Doesn't really feel like there's a big power imbalance here. And I'm still a little bit curious because people like Peru, Von Volner, maybe Piaget, they're all still really, really wary of Mortimer overall. So even though we've temporarily aligned ourselves with him, I have faith that the Spear of Longinus will be a thing next episode and maybe, maybe we'll get to avenge our mother. In terms of the puzzles this time, we had the two big ones, which was basically finding the right lance and the Piaget hand puzzle. I liked both of them. Yeah, especially because they weren't Bible puzzles. I actually like it when a puzzle forces me to get out the pen and the paper and all, so the Piaget hand puzzle was really fun, although I still maintain that it probably could have been made a little bit not as hard? Well, like I said, it was hard because you couldn't really see what was on his hand. That was the hard part. In general though, I do like the council's puzzles a lot because they often give you a really big sense of satisfaction once you get it. So there is a few that's kind of like, what? But uh, overall, I like them. Mm, at this point, we've pretty much maxed out all our skills. We have level 2 for every single skill now, so the effort point system doesn't really come into play much anymore. Like, I'm still angry that they didn't give me the jelly from Mortimer's coffin, but uh, it doesn't really matter in the long run, because it's just two effort points, and yeah, most things don't really cost anymore. Interesting little curveball that the Devil's Thorn has a double meaning and function. That's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to mind reading more people in the future. And I have a feeling that's going to be a crucial skill in the conference. Remember that if Mortimer wants to pass his motion, the vote's gotta be unanimous. And right now, there's like 20 people against us. Okay, maybe not 20, but like 5. So it's gonna take a lot of convincing, especially with Holm. Holm himself could just say, I object, and that's, that's it. So I'm not sure how that's gonna be resolved. Maybe we'll get some super crazy mind battle with horns and devil tails, huh? I guess we'll find out in November, late November? Two more months. The council has been really timely with their episode releases, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be late November. And hopefully I will see you all back here then for more crazy demon mind control sleeping with my sister crazy video games. <laughs> Bye!